What's up, what's up, what's up, my fellow creators? Welcome, guys. I hope you're having a beautifully, phenomenally blessed day. Thank you for joining me for a moment in Becky's House of Cards. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel down below, set that notification bell so you always know when the next video does go live. And with that being said, today I'm doing something just a little bit different. I've got my Aries card set up here, but this is you dealing with an Aries. So what information do you need to know in regards to dealing with an Aries? I'm going to have two piles to choose from because not everybody's dealing with the same kind of vibrational Aries as another. But this will give you guys an option to hopefully find a message that resonates with you and helps you along your journey and help you deal with the Aries that you're dealing with. Okay, so just remember these are collective messages, not private messages or personal messages. And make sure you guys do check out the description box down below. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and get started. And what messages source do you have for the collective dealing with an Aries? How can we help them out? How can we send them off with the information that they need in regards to their Aries? What messages do you have for them? The collective dealing with an Aries, piles one and two. What do they need to know? The messages for the collective dealing with Aries, piles one and two. The collective dealing with an Aries, piles one and two. What messages do you have for them, Source? Dealing with an Aries, pile one and two. Okay. All right. Let's see what comes out for pile number one. What messages do you have for them dealing with an Aries? Wow, okay, so these two cards are coming out, so I'll take them. In pile number two, what messages do you have for them dealing with an Aries? How can we help them outsource? What messages do you have for pile number two dealing with an Aries? Pile number two, dealing with an Aries. What messages do you have for them, source? Okay, they want this one. <laughs> so I heard I'm caught I don't know what that means but it just came through really quickly right now so it's for pile one okay what other messages do you have for pile number two dealing with an Aries whoa okay yeah I'm caught it came out so strong right now <laughs> pile number two okay thank you all right I want that one Okay, so those came out quick. Um, I'm not going to put anything on top of them, but audiently, so just in case you guys need to hear clear audience, we have pile number one and pile number two. So if you need more time, please pause the video, but with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and move on to pile number one, dealing with an Aries. I don't know why, but I feel like they want to be like this for some reason. Okay. What messages do we have source for pile one dealing with an Aries? Okay, so you could be a Libra with the Queen of Swords in reverse, the lovers in the upright, and temperance in the reverse. Woo, okay. Let me get some clarifying cards here before we get started. May I please have a clarifying card for the Queen of Swords in the reverse source? Okay. The Eight of Wands in the reverse. May okay. Before I could even ask, but okay. I'll take it for the temperance death in reverse and then on the bottom we have the chariot a lot of majors and mysteries coming through for you guys okay so there's definitely a sense of them being cold to you all right you could be a Sagittarius a Scorpio Cancer Gemini or a Libra coming out okay does not have to be but that is the energies that are coming out here let me put this like this so, yeah, their first, their first thing that's going on is they're definitely being cold towards you. They're being almost, like, vicious in a way. Like, that's what I heard. Like, that's why I feel like I'm caught, came out while I was shuffling. Uh, it could for, be for both piles, but I really feel that here. I feel like because they're at a place of being um, spiritually unable to make the decision to move forward with this connection. So I feel like this is you in the center here being highlighted as the lovers in the upright. Um, what's going on is that there's this connection. You're very much listening to your intuition. You're being connected with, you know, your higher self. And the problem is, is that you 
pile one, you have options, but you care very much about this Aries. You care about them a lot. But you're also aware that they're dealing with a lot of things, and you're aware that they're dealing with a lot of things that they don't want to change. And you're done waiting around. You found balance within your own spiritual journey. You're like, you know what? I'm going to let my spiritual journey take me where it's meant to take me. And I'm not going to try and force things with this Aries anymore. And the reason why is because they've always presented themselves as cold towards you because they're anxious about this connection. Okay, this could be a family member. This could be a friend. It could be a lover. It could be a past lover. It could be somebody you want as a lover. Whatever the situation is, what's going on is that they have realized that you've moved on. And that's what this lover's card here it's talking about the ability to connect with a higher being right so this is source this is your angels this is your guides this is even your higher self you're connecting with yourself in a much deeper level you're connecting with the divine in a much deeper level and you're allowing that to balance out your life and you're allowing this you see this cupid here is like shooting the arrow at this younger lady don't get it twisted. This isn't about love, okay? <laughs> You're allowing your guides to show you the path. And that's what these indicate two paths, okay? You have the path from the past, the path to the future. And it's like, you're the one in the present. And so what's going on is it's like you're allowing your guides to show you the path in this present moment. And you're not afraid of that. But when it comes to this Aries, they're completely anxious about what's going on here because it's like you've never done this before. You've never acted like this before. And so they want to control the situation. And that's why they're being cold towards you. And it's like they may have pleasantries towards you when you're around. But really, other than that, they want nothing to do with you. And it's not that they don't want nothing to do with you. It's that they have no idea how to approach you. So they're they're guarded when it comes to you. They're very guarded. And they're like trying to protect themselves from <laughs> your rash tongue. That's what I heard. I'm trying to protect myself from pile one's rash tongue like they're honest and i don't like their honesty yeah you are honest look you've got gemini energy here the ruler is mercury communication truth seeking truth always and i feel like that's the energy that you're in you're always seeking truth and that's why the lovers came out here it's to represent that you're in a place of embracing your truth and also embracing the fact that you don't have a problem saying what needs to be said not being rude, not being unkind. It's you say what you need to say to protect yourself and to keep yourself in a state of balance. You're like, I'm done holding my tongue, especially with this Aries. It's like, I've held my tongue for too long. Look, and that's what they like when you hold your tongue, then they can be cold towards you because it makes you out to be this person that's chasing them. So this is definitely a chaser runner dynamic, but now the, the opposite has happened. Now you're the one that's on the run. And really, you're not. I don't want you guys to think you're a runner or anything like that. What's happening is that they're chasing after you energetically because you've cut off the... You are the one that's cut off the energy. Like, you look to the past realizing that you've learned some... You've learned some valuable lessons. And I think the big, biggest lesson that you learned here is regarding love. It's regarding love. Love for oneself. Love for the journey. Love for this place you know and and this person's been trying to manipulate you to get you to do you know what they want but you've grown em emotionally and you've become emotionally mature and that bothers them and so they feel unclear about this and the reason they feel unclear about this is because they're trying to manipulate you through their words their actions their their way of being okay and they don't they don't like that you're so willing to try new things and they are refusing to transform themselves in regards to this right so they're keeping everything in kind of like a oh it's got to be the old way or no way like it's just a weird energy right they're being asked to transform this is the chariot in my deck talks about spiritual victory this is like spiritual growth. We have the lovers talks about spiritual growth as well. This is a very, you are a very spiritual pile, number one. And that's what bothers them. That's what, temperance is spiritual as well. Like, look, it's this angel that's balancing this energy in the two cups back and forth. It's flawlessly flowing. It's talking about balance. It's talking about intuition. It's talking about listening to that guidance that you're given but in the reverse, look, it's like these two are depicting the Aries. And so they're in the reversal energy of themselves. And they're being asked to transform and realize that they have control over their own lives. And it's not up to you. 
you need to just continue on your journey because you're ha you're in the place of spiritual journey. And that's what they want to transform. So this the death or the nameless card, however you want to see it, okay, came out here. And if he swings his scythe, he's the one that's cutting out the spiritual journey here, right? He's the one that's cutting out the, or it could be a she. Anyways, the skeleton is cutting out the spiritual journey here, the chariot, this, this beautiful intuitive energy. This is Cancerian energy ruled by Ajna, right? And so it's like you have Scorpio here, which is ruled by the root chakra. And guys, this is the astrology that I study here. So it is different for everyone, but I study a specific kind of astrology. And this is what I've learned in mine. Ruled by the root chakra. They are um, actually, excuse me, the Manipura chakra. I apologize. That was my fault. They're, they're ruled by the... What am I saying? I'm sorry. I got so discombobulated. I feel like that's how you make this person feel. Anyways, you have Scorpio energy here, and they're trying to cut that out. They're trying to take action towards that, okay? And it's different for everybody. It's different for everybody how they do that. But they're trying to cut you out of this. They're trying to put you in an imbalanced state. They want you to have failure. They want you to be in a state of spiritual failure because they don't like how much you've grown because you've changed. Point blank. You have changed. That's it. And they don't like that. They don't like that you've changed. Right? And they're, they're preoccupied with themselves on how not to have this transformation. They're preoccupied with themselves on not only that, but how do I transform you, Pile One, back into this place of being my bitch. Okay? Like, I apologize, but that is the energy that's coming through. Man, this Aries is really hot-headed. I mean, most Aries are, but... They're just, they're mad. Like, they're mad at your journey. They're mad at how far you've gone. They're mad at everything that you've done. And so your Aries is literally jealous of you. And I feel like they don't really have any right to because they're the ones that are denying their own, in, they're denying their own journey. Yeah, this one wanted to come out. I thought it did. They're denying their own journey. They're not allowing themselves growth. They're not allowing themselves to grow. And so I, I don't feel like you guys may be connected in the future. Ooh, we've got power deer coming out. Look in kindness. So it's just allowing yourself to continue to show compassion towards yourself and towards them. Don't don't be rude, okay? Like it's like no matter how they are and the fact that they don't want to transform themselves, the fact that they don't want to let go of what's holding them back here, because they're being too self preoccupied right now. They don't want to listen to their guidance. They would rather listen to their emotional ego which has been ruling them for their entire lives, and they like that. That's comfortable for them, right? It's comfortable for them to stay in a state of always being led by their ego. And to let go of that means that they have to change something about themselves that they don't want to change. Miracles and blessings. Look, 13 over 13. Okay, yeah, this person has shown you a lot. I'm going to read this to you guys, but I want to start over here. Look at that. We've got waterfall, effortless, and winter solstice reflections. So I feel like I'm going to start with waterfall here. This is for you. This is about surrendering to the gravitational pull of the divine, wherever the divine takes you. And I feel like you want this person to be in your life. I mean, otherwise you wouldn't be here, right? And maybe you're mad about how this person has treated you, and so you're hoping that they're going to get their karma. But at the end of the day, whatever it is, is that you're not going to be around to see that. And you have to be okay with that because Source is taking you on a journey to somewhere else. And sometimes in this, there are moments where you fall into a pool of water and you just have to be still. And you have to allow that stillness to envelop you. And in enveloping you, you will effortlessly learn and know what it is that you need to do next. Where it was that you needed to become. Uh, where it was that you were headed. And that's something that is powerful on this journey because I feel like this Aries has been a stop for you. It's like they've been the dam in your waterfall. They're the ones that blocked you off from moving. And so now it's like you've grown beyond that. And so it's like, can you still show up and assign emotional maturity on this journey? Because right now they need to go into a period of reflection without you, right? And there is a message here for you, too. This is about you reflecting on the past. So I feel like they might be coming back into your life shortly. And it's something that you can't you can't change. And so it's just reflecting of how far you've come. 
but this Aries needs to reflect on their own journey because they're not allowing the stillness to come. Like when the winter comes, everything goes quiet. It's like looking in the mirror, right? That's why the, the pond is frozen and everything is reflected off of it. Reflection. It's looking at your own reflection and seeing how far you've come, seeing what it is that you've overcome, seeing what it is that you've, in other words, conquered on your journey. And I feel like you've definitely conquered an old belief, an old habit when it comes to this Aries. And so now what they're asking you is to stay powerful and stay true to yourself. You know, we just had the the new moon in Leo, right? And so we're all still reeling from the changes that this new moon brought. And I feel like we will be for the next two weeks. And that's what it's saying. It's like, so just stay in your own power. This is owning the divine feminine. Just understanding that being kind and compassionate towards this person is going to bring you so much more than being in that energy of falling to their level. They have things to say. They're going to be cold towards you. That's okay. That's on them. That has nothing to do with you. And if you don't play into that energy, it's going to hurt them rather than help them, right? Because they're so used to being able to get, they've got your, what is it? I've got your number. Like, I know your sign, I know your number, and I'm going to get you any way I can. Like, that is what they're saying here. And, and the thing is, is that they don't. They don't anymore. You have transformed. You have transformed, and you have so much power within you. You're your own powerhouse, right? Number 11 coming through. 11 for me is about being able to just do it this is taking the lead taking the charge walking through that doorway even though you don't know what's on the other side can you maintain your power when this person comes back into your life because it's going to serve your highest good this is about you closing a cycle there's so many majors coming out here and it's like it's amazing because it's there there Really what it's coming down to is like you've grown spiritually. You're in a spiritual place in your life and you're okay with it. They're not okay with it. And their biggest goal is to try and change that about you because they're trying to make you see things their way. And it's like all you have to say is, you know what, let's agree to disagree and then move on. Why? Because everything has its gift. This card came because there are many miracles happening in your life right now. The angels are asking you to look at how things are. Look again. You will find that your life is filled with miracles and blessings. Reflect on who you are and your journey to this point. Isn't that what I just said with waterfall and reflection? Recognize and accept the blessings that have occurred in your life. Situations that were not ideal brought their own gifts and lessons, which is exactly what this was. They came into your life to help you grow. Your existence began with the spark of a miracle. Continual blessings and miracles continue to show up in the smallest ways. Be willing to receive these gifts. Check in with your self-talk and beliefs. Are you open to a miracle? Be ready for the unexpected. So maybe when this person comes in, they're going to offer you something that they've never offered you before because of your growth. Because there's no reason to keep you in a place of, of you know, lack and suffering. Can you forgive this person and move on? Can you allow yourself to grow beyond what this connection brought you? Because again, there's there's a cycle here. And in order for the cycle to end, it has to come back around. It's like the test, right? The ultimate test pile. And it's like you got to go through it again to make sure that you're, you've overcome it. And that's what they're asking. Are you, are you ready to do that? Because that's what Source is going to do. They're going to bring them back in to see that you've overcome this this situation and I feel like with deer coming out here you have you've overcome it you're no longer in this process of reliving in these cycles we have hair showing up as I split the deck cycles you're no longer repeating these cycles and it's like now it's like to test your own strength to test your own resolve towards your journey because you've come so far and now you're just going to effortlessly flow through this time with them look we've got the full moon coming out so they could be coming to your life by the full next full moon whenever you see this, okay? These are timeless readings. So they could be coming into your life by the next full moon. And you're again, completion, you're going to complete the process. You're going to see yourself through new eyes because this person is no longer got control over you, even though they used to. And that's what's so sad. It's like they wanted control over you all along, and it's because they see how great you are. But now you're getting an offer of new love. 
whatever that is, soul tribe, a lover, family ship, you're letting go of toxic habits, you're letting go of toxic relationships, and that's so powerful for you, Pile One, that's so powerful, so keep going, you've done an amazing job, you've done an amazing job, and this, power, this person, this Aries, no longer has control over you, even though they may have at one point, there was a huge lesson that you learned from that, and that was to find your own strength and power, okay? Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel down below, set that notification bell so you always know when the next video does go live. And with that being said, I'm going to move on. Go forth boldly, my fellow creators, and courageously find creative ways to rise above in life, laughter, and love until we meet each other again. Mwah. Peace out. I love y'all. Bye. Pile two. All right. Let me get a drink of water. All right, what do you need to know in dealing with your Aries? Okay, so we have the Three of Swords coming out in reverse. The Pope S in the upright. Okay. First of all, I feel like the Pope S is you. Let's get some clarifying cards. May I please have a clarifying card for this Three of Swords in reverse source? Whoa, okay, thank you. May I please have a clarifying card for the Knight of Cups in reverse? May I please have a clarifying card for the Knight of Cups in reverse? One card, please. Okay, they want that one. We have the Seven of Swords in the bottom of the deck in the reverse. Okay. Let's see what we got going on here, Pile 2. Six of Swords in the reverse. Okay, a lot of Swords energy. And the Nine of Swords. Woo! Okay. This is interesting. So first and foremost, you're in a place of following your intuition. You're in a, I heard it, stronghold. You're in a place of stronghold. Like you dealing with this Aries have stepped up and realized that this person was a point of defeat for you for so long. I feel like this person really caused a lot of drama in your life. I feel like this Aries that you're dealing with has caused a lot of imbalance for you. Like, they wanted to create misfortune in your life, right? And it's interesting because the three and the six of swords is the nine of swords, and we have the nine of swords over here in the upright with this knight of cups. And what this is, this is defeat by a third party, right? Or unexpected defeat when an obstacle presents itself. And you're looking right at that, and you're like, damn, like, that really is the truth in my journey. Like, I have really let this person get under my skin, and I let them really determine whether or not I had a balanced outlook on life. This is all about being stuck in your mentality. And so your intuition is looking at that now. Like you have allowed your higher self to come in and be like, okay, what's really going on with this connection? What's really, is this serving me? How is this helping me? How is this bringing me luck? How is this bringing me happiness? How is this bringing me balance? How is this affecting my life? And in viewing that, what ended up happening is that you stepped up into your priestess energy here, which is amazing, right? This is being able to look beyond the veil, see this person as they really are, to see them as somebody who can't stand to see another person happy. This person is filled with a lot of anger, a lot of discord. This person is filled with a lot of upset. They're mad because of the things that are going on. And I don't think that it actually has to do with you. I think that you're just kind of thrown in on the pile. Like, I got this image of just being a piece of garbage thrown on top of another pile of garbage. Like, that's what I really feel like it is. And I feel like for so long, you shouldered that. I feel like you really felt like something was wrong with you when it came to this Aries. And they're saying, no, that has nothing to do with you. Like, the way this Aries acts is all on this Aries. It's just this Aries can't stand to be happy because... They are in a state of emotional distress. They're in a state of emotional panic. And so when they come in, they're going to offer you something that is superficial. It's a superficial, ugly love. Like it's not, it's, it's, it's like they want to come back in, but it's like, you're not even looking at this offer. Like you're like, no, I'm not going to look at that. And the reason being is because you're like, I have already gone through all these costs to win and I'm not going to stop now. Like, this is winning against great odds, right? This is winning against the hardships. This is winning against all those bad things that have happened. You start out with the Nine of Swords, and then they come back around. You realize who they are, and you let that go, and they come back around. And what they offer you is something so little compared to what it should be. 
And here's the thing, pile two. I just want you to understand, like, they can't offer you something more. This is the best that they'll ever offer you because this is the energy that they're in. And right now, this is being involved in a lost cause. Like, I feel like this is their energy. Like, they're, they're getting caught up in a lost cause. And I don't want any comments down below. Like, they deserve that shit. They deserve whatever happened. No, like, don't. I will block it. I will delete it. I, you know, it's, it, I'm not... I'm not for that. I'm not for people saying nasty things about somebody just because you got hurt by somebody. Because you have to understand, hurt people hurt people. So they got hurt first. They got hurt first. And are you willing to put yourself in their shoes to see things from their point of view? You already got hurt from them. So what if it was them going through the same situation that you went through? And just because you're like, well, I would never do that to somebody. Yeah, but everybody's different. Okay. And I want you to understand that everybody's different here. They're doing the best they can. They're doing the best they can. And it's like you're in this energy of like, no, I'm done. I'm done dealing with this mentality. I'm done getting stuck in this mindset of you thinking you're better than me. I'm done getting stuck in this mindset of you thinking you have control over me because you don't. I'm winning. I'm winning when it comes to my mindset because I'm standing in my, my Popes energy here. I'm the one that's standing in my intuition. I'm the one that's standing and listening to my higher self, listening to source, self-love, accepting my own self, listening to the creative inspirations that I'm getting, taking a chance to take them. And I read into your situation and I know that I don't want to be a part of that. And at the end of the day, unfortunate as this is, you walking away from them is going to hurt them. And I'm not telling you that so that you can be like, oh, finally I'll have one up. No. I'm telling you that so that you can understand that you have to walk away for your own good. This is not about getting back at them. If you walk away with the intentions of trying to get back at them, it will come back around to you, pile two. Because the universe only speaks intention, vibration. What do you intend with your vibration? If you walk away saying, do you see this fly right here on my finger? Just landed on my finger? Like, what is that about? Did you see that? Lord. That's family. Embracing family. Knowing that you have to come from a place of just saying, I have to protect myself. Because for so long, you made me feel like I wasn't worthy. And the saddest thing is, is that I'm the one that allowed that because I didn't know any better. And that's, that's the most difficult thing here. I think it's easy for us to say, oh... You know, it's your fault, it's your fault, and it's your fault. But when you really start to become self-aware and self-actualization comes into play, you realize it wasn't anybody's fault. And it's not even your fault. It was just because you didn't know any better. And if you didn't know any better, how could you change it? Just like them, if they don't know any better other than to hurt people because they've been hurt, how can they change it? They have to make a decision. But you can't make them make a decision. They have to make it on their own. Just like you're the one that had to make a decision to see things from a different place. You're the one that had to see it from a different place. No one else could make you see it from a different place. Right? And I think that's the hardest thing for us on this journey is that we're oftentimes thinking that, oh, you know, like, people hurt me with intention. They hurt me because they knew what they were doing. No, I think half the time it's subconscious. In fact, I would say probably about 80% of the time. There are there are cases that it's not subconscious. There are cases when it is somebody doing it because they're malicious. But I'm not getting a malicious energy from this person. What I'm getting is a loneliness. like And, and the part that you played in their life kept them from feeling so lonely. Like they weren't the only ones that dealt with it. But at the end of the day, I'm just going to tell you, pile two, they didn't realize that they were doing it to you. It's just that it was easy to keep treating you the way that they were treating you because it made them feel less lonely because you were lonely too and that played out. And that played out for them. Okay? So we have groundedness, armadillo coming out. Um, this is for you, number seven. You have luck if you change what you're doing. So I am getting that there's a viciousness that's coming through here, a malicious energy from you. So they're saying that Back off. Back off on that and really just observe the situation because this person has dealt with this for generations. Right? We have Orca song lines here. This is talking about family generations and it's time for you to sacrifice. Sacrifice your ego. Sacrifice your ego. And realize that this person's dealing with the same hurt that they put on you 
Because that's all they knew what love to be. And so when you find a grounded place and you ground yourself, you'll be able to come at this with love and light. And you're not going to be coming from a place of like, ha ha, finally you got what you deserve. Because it's not about that. This is about you taking responsibility for yourself and finding your centered point. Letting your own sun shine on you, on your projects, on your journey, on your light. And the way to do that is just by being yourself, being your kind self, not not the person who is hurt. Because there's a there's a tendency, it's like I see a teeter-totter. It's very easy for you to go to one side and the other. And so they want they want you to bring your energy into the center and find that balance so that the teeter-totter stays straight, right? Find it in the middle and bring that to this connection cave sanctuary yeah so this is what this person brought into your life to help you find your path of purpose this person brought in the way that you can acknowledge taking time away if it gets too overwhelming you know how to walk away from this person you know how to go and create a place for you to to be creative to allow your creative endeavors to shine to allow your inner self to come out and that's a beautiful thing here because without this energy, this would never have arised. And that's how you can look at this from a different set of eyes. It's like from a higher perspective, seeing that this person helped you become grounded in yourself. And not only that, helped you embrace your priestess energy, your popus energy within. And that helped you to come into a place of learning how to set away time and space and a place for you to go and create and let your creative endeavors carry you this man has no concern about the time he came prepared to create and that's exactly what he's doing here he's painting on the wall the sun setting he's got his fire built he's got all his supplies down here this is like you being prepared to do you and that's what you go and do and that's why you're winning that's why you're winning this person is upset because they really want to bring you back down into this vibrational energy, but you're not. You're not. The only way you go back into this vibrational energy is if your intentions are not pure when it comes to this connection. Wow, look at this. We've got nine. The number 18 card coming out, which is nine. It says, embrace your emotions. Allow your feelings to surface and be accepted. This is so perfect for this connection because I feel like that's what you're your popes is telling you is that this energy that's happened in the past this imbalance this this disdain this hurt this confusion that has happened in your life are you going to allow yourself to feel that to feel that so that you can heal it and let it go and acknowledge that what you felt was valid it doesn't matter what this person did it doesn't matter that you were trying to seek validation from other people you don't need that can you validate your own feeling? Can you say, wow, I was really hurt. I was really hurt in this situation and I felt really rotten and I felt like I was really done dirty and I felt like this and this happened to me and just spend time with that and acknowledge it. Let yourself cry. Let yourself scream and yell. Let yourself be angry about it. Whatever it is you need. But then let it go. Let it go so that you can step up into this energy of winning against all the odds. 999 is a very powerful number for you. Okay? It's about bringing a situation to the end so that you can allow new fruit to blossom. Now, I'm going to read this to you. Let's see what it has to say. I love this card. It's so beautiful with this unicorn here and the dark colors. The little girl that's holding on. It's like a dream. Feelings and emotions are a part of who you are. Allow yourself to feel what is going on. Your feelings can alert you to the truth of a situation. Take positive steps to determine why you feel the way you do. Emotions come under four categories, happiness, sadness, anger, and fear. Once you figure out what is going on for you, you can take power away from an emotion. Experiencing an emotion you are uncomfortable expressing can be a big challenge. Journaling is a way to process and clarify difficult emotions. Writing about your emotions will help you organize your thoughts and work through your feelings. You are in a period of growth and learning how to better understand yourself. Okay, so it's like you're being able to transcend your current situation. So I feel like this Aries is in your life right now and it's like overcoming this situation. 
but not allowing it to control you. And I feel like in the past, the situation has controlled you because you've allowed your emotions to control you. So it's not this person that has created the hardened ships in your life. Honestly, it's because no one taught us how to deal with our emotions. And at the end of the day, when we don't learn how to deal with our emotions, man, they'll get us into a world of hurt. And we'll think it's other people because that's what we've been told. Oh, blame another person because it was that other person's that it was their fault that I even feel this way. And, and no, it's not. It's just that they're triggering something from your past that you have yet to heal. And that's why it's so important. I feel like that's why journaling came up and we've got Cave Sanctuary here. It's because it's telling you to take that time to really go and spend with yourself when you're in the presence of this person. You don't have to spend your entire time with this person. Even if they're trying to make you see that, yes, you do. No, you don't. No, you don't. You have to You have to take care of yourself first and foremost. And that's not being selfish. That is being wise because then when you take care of yourself can you come back and be like okay i'm ready to put some energy into this i'm ready to be compassionate towards this person i'm ready to see this with eyes of love rather than seeing it with eyes of hurt and pain which causes more drama which causes more fear which causes more heartbreak which causes all kinds of things you see it's not easy it's simple but it's not easy it's asking you can you take that higher road <laughs> right it's like that song by fort minor you take the high or i'll take the high road you take the low road and we'll meet somewhere along the way it's like that's the that's it it's like they're on the low vibrational road and you're coming up to the high vibrational road and it's like you need to maintain a space in the high vibration so that way then if this person is in a low vibration well if you maintain your high vibrational energy it's not you making the compromise to meet them. It's them making a compromise not to break your boundaries. And that's the interesting thing about this journey that people don't always understand. They're really thinking that, oh, you know, like I have to, I have to get back at them. No, it's really you just have to stay within your own frame, within your own boundaries, within your own self, and then you'll see something beautiful happen, okay? This is what I have for you. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel down below, set that notification bell so you always know when the next video does go live. With that being said, until next time, go forth boldly, my fellow creators, and courageously find creative ways to rise above in life, laughter, and love until we meet each other again. Mwah. Peace out. I love y'all. Bye.